On the 15th of October 2017, retired Brigadier Julius Madabio was re-elected by the delegates at the National Delegates Conference held in Freetown to be the presidential candidate for the 2018 presidential elections for the Sierra Leone People's Party, SLPP. Over the years, diverse assumptions have been made about retired Brigadier Julius Madabio for political gains. As a son of the late Paramount Chief Charlie Bio II of Sobeni Chiefdom in Bond District, Southern Sierra Leone, what was it like growing up without a father? I lost my dad um, when I was at the age of four, and uh, because when I got to class seven, I needed to move over to a bigger town so that I can take my selective entrance. So my sister, who had just uh, finished college, decided to to, to host me, uh, basically. She was just out of college, but then there. She had a couple of other people, uh, my, my elder siblings, an elder sister and an elder brother, but she decided to add me to the body. I went to Milton Magai Teachers College. After graduation there, I went to Holy Rosary Secondary School, where I was teaching and I thought it was time for me to remove mother from the village and bring him to Pujang, where I enrolled him at the Holy, Fam Holy Family Primary School. Mother Bio was one of my pupils at the Holy Family Primary School in Pujang. To me, personally, as a teacher for Mother Bio, he's a mild person. When he completed his primary school education in Puja, retired Brigadier Julius Madabio went to the Bo Government Secondary School. Every, every student in the South or around the country would want to go to the Bo School. And I had admiration for the school and its performance and the old boys, so I decided to choose Bo School. My easiest recollection of Madabio is that um, he was a very mature man right from the beginning. Even as a boy, composed, purposeful, and went about things in a mature way. Mother Bill has not chanced upon what perhaps we want to call greatness these days. In both school, retired Brigadier Julius Mother Bill was admired by his friends and teachers for his discipline and hard work. This is the only person I have known in school. You know, boys' school is seen to be, uh, it's a public school just for boys, where boys from different backgrounds come. And most times we are influenced by our peers, and most often we tend to lose some of the values we have or acquire values we may not have had. But the Julius Marabu, since 1978 to 1985, when we took our A levels was known to be a very disciplined character. I don't remember any teacher having cause to reprimand him or even go as far as punish him, as far as I remember. In those days, we were operating what we called a punishment book. I can safely say there was not, a, there was not an occasion on which mother was ever entered in that book for punishment. So through and through, and this is, this is a record he kept all through his school days. I also happened to teach at the Bow School when he was there. And no teacher, no student ever complained mother. And you will find out that most of his uh, companions who are now with him are from the Bow School. I wasn't a troublemaker. Um, as a matter of fact, at the, at the end of uh, my seventh year, uh, I got the most prestigious uh, principal's award for being the best behaved boy. Um, it is not easy after seven years, in your formative years, to be able to get that type of um, uh, 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 prize. He was of exemplary conduct, and that was recognized by the time he got to sixth form, when staff unanimously voted him prefect of discipline, and at the end of the year, he became, he earned the principal's proficiency prize, my prize then. 
Well, his friends were going to university. He went to the military, which was a surprise to all who knew him growing up. He was the best uh, government student in class. But then when we took the, the A-levels, he and I got the best results, A-level history, uh, results in history. We got a B. And he, he got three A-levels plus general paper. And he, his result, both O and A-level results, prepared him for university. Well, he was, you know, qualified to enter from a college. And uh, when I came to him, you know, later on, I was surprised when he told me he had changed his mind and he was going to join the army. There was this advert for cadets in the military. So he applied. He applied before he even told us. So when he got admission into this cadet course, he came back and told us that he had been accepted. So we prayed for him. Here was somebody who had had a safe, smooth journey through school, passed all his exams, had been through O levels with flying colors, had come to sixth form, had had his subjects. Why is others we are vying for, for, for admission into colleges, universities, or here and abroad? It came to me as a great surprise. A mother had enrolled for the army. Why did he really join the army and what was his dream? I also never really thought I was going to be in the military. I, I wanted to be an academic. That was really what I wanted to do, an engineer for that matter. Um, although I didn't pursue the science course, but um, that was really what I wanted to do. Uh, life works in a very funny way. Sometimes you plan to go one way and the Lord takes you another way. I had applied for, uh, for admission at the Frobe College and um, while I had received acknowledgement and while I was waiting for the interview, uh, or the, um, there was an advertisement for uh, cadets. So I said, oh, this is an interesting option. I'm going to college, I want to go to university, I don't even know how I'm going to pay my university fee, but then the, 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 the government is going to train me and I'm going to you know, give service to the world and to my country. So when I weighed the options, I thought it was uh, extremely uh, the best option to, to explore. As a military officer, he exemplified his discipline and focus and was quickly identified as a leader and a good one too. Bill was first deployed at a place called Misburg. Misburg is an outskirt in Morovia, where the MPF rebels and the Ekuma force were divided by a river. That deployment was a very critical deployment. With the very seasoned officers who were there, there their report of incident every time, at least twice a week. But when the young man went there, it took about three weeks, no incident report. I mean, no fighting, no ceasefire, because ceasefire happened. Later on, he, he called and the, the chief of staff called to say, he said, mark him, say he could make a good leader in future. I worked with him for four or five years. And during that time, I found him a very dedicated and hardworking person. Um, very much focused. Um, very much somebody who thinks very deeply about what he wants to do and tries to set a pathway about how to achieve that. That's the kind of person I found him to be. In a military coup that brought the National Provision and Ruling Council to power in 1992, retired Brigadier Julius Marabio started the Ministry of Marine Resources. I was the first permanent secretary and I worked with him for a period of, of over a year. I found him to be a very calculated and intelligent young man. He had the ability of organizing. It was a new ministry, and uh, 
it was difficult to organize because it was then a division in the Ministry of Agriculture and the uh, um, government was not in any position at the time to acquire much revenue from that division until he came in and established the, the division as a ministry. Bada is the sort of person who, when you work with him, he wants to be able to discuss things. He comes up with his points of view and he listens to yours. Decision making is basically based on looking at all the parameters in front of him and say, well, look, this is the way I see things. How do we move forward from here? Uh, planning and getting things to move on. Um, but we work together as a team. In January 1996, Retired Brigadier Julius Marabio became head of state under the NPRC2 and initiated dialogue to end Sierra Leone's rebel war. He started the peace process. I took a trip to Libya and met Kone Gaddafi after staying there for about a week. I actually met him and I told him that um, I was an envoy of my uh, head of state and um, I explained to him, I asked him to help us you know, bring the war to an end. Of course, he did indicate that uh, he was, uh, he had trained all of these people, but that he didn't know for the Sanko particularly. And uh, he described a lot of other means for me to get in, in touch with for the Sanko. When I was at the helm, I knew the only, the, only, the, the only thing that can stop me, the only way I can be stopped is by God. I was, I was fully in charge as head of state, so I went on a flurry of diplomatic activities in the West African region. Um, visited heads of state and I told them the, my burning desire to end the war you know, in a peaceful way. That was how I got the links that led me to um, Côte d'Ivoire and from Côte d'Ivoire we were able to get Fode Sanko from the middle of uh, nowhere and brought him actually to the negotiating table. Although some have over the years refused to credit him for his leadership in ensuring the restoration of democracy, the history of Sierra Leone's democracy is incomplete without mentioning retired Brigadier Julius Marabio. The issue of whether you hand over power or not was never an issue as such until at one point there was some talk about it and Mara was very adamant about it, but we need to move on. Okay, uh, but in terms of handing over power, uh, that really, really was not a critical decision or a decision that anybody was allowed to sort of deviate from. Discussions took place. It was agreed that this was the way forward. The country had to move on. The role of the military government had been achieved in terms of stabilizing and putting things together. Uh, that was not an issue. Discussion did take place and the decision was that we were going to hand over power anyway. We should always be evaluated on the fact that we ended uh, nearly uh, three, three decades of, uh, uh, of, uh, of dictatorship in this country. And um, sometimes people try to say, oh, but you didn't do this, you didn't do that. Some of the challenges we encountered were even older than some of us, most of us, who we are, who we are leading the, that administration. But we were able to bring to an end three decades of dictatorship, and we are able to introduce a democratic dispensation, which we all uh, um, I enjoy it today. I'm deeply humbled by the membership of the great Sierra Leone People's Party for giving me the singular honor to carry its flag as presidential candidate for the second time into the parliamentary and presidential elections scheduled for March 7 this year. As he runs for president in Sierra Leone, retired Brigadier Julius Marabio has 